Number 13, Chapter 12, A Nova. There is some evidence that high school students justify cheating in class on the basis of poor teacher skills or low levels of teacher caring. Students appear to rationalize their illicit behavior based on perceptions of how their teachers view cheating. Poor teachers are thought not to know or care whether students cheat, so cheating in their classes is okay. Good teachers, on the other hand, do care and are alert to cheating, so students tend not to cheat in their classes. Following our hypothetical data similar to the actual research results, the scores represent judgments of the um, acceptability of cheating for the students in each sample. So we have levels of poor teacher, average teacher, and good teacher, and we have sample size, the means for each um, category, and the sum of squared deviations. A states use an ANOVA with alpha equal to 0 0.05 to determine whether there are significant differences in the student's judgment depending on how they see their teachers. And we'll begin with our research and null hypothesis. So as usual, the null is going to state that the poor teachers um, will be judged equally to the average teachers as well as the average score for good teachers. So all of these students will perceive these teachers to be um, the same in terms of their acceptance of cheating in their classroom. The research hypothesis is going to state that at least one type of teacher is significantly different. So in terms of how the, the students perceive them, there would be at least one type of teacher that is perceived differently in comparison to the other types of teachers. So at least one difference will be noted, and that's what we're testing for. We're going to use this data to, again, um, conduct an ANOVA test with alpha 0.05. So as uh, we've done in the past, our F ratio is equal to the MS mean squares for between conditions, in this case it's a quasi-independent variable, over the mean squares for within and we have um, the data to construct um, or calculate each of these statistics. MS, MS between is equal to SS between over DF between and MS within is equal to SS within over DF within. As I've stated in previous um, videos, the calculation for MS within is the easiest, especially when we're given SS, so I'm going to calculate that first. So SS within is equal to the sum of our sum of square deviations across conditions. So we're given all of our SS values here. So we can calculate what the sum of square deviations is across conditions. So we take 30 plus 33 plus 42 and we take that summation, and that summation is equal to 105. And we can now calculate our DF for within. DF within is equal to N minus K. In this case, N is equal to 24. And we have three different conditions, or three levels. So 24 minus 3 gives us 21. We do have what we need to calculate MS within. We have our SS within, which is 105, and our DF within, which is 21. And we will come back to this value um, in just a moment. So we'll calculate it now, but we'll put it in our source table in just a second. The next statistic I'd like to calculate is SS total. As indicated before, SS between 
is the more complex equation. And if we um, can skip over it, it's best just to be most efficient. Um, so SS total is equal to the sum of all x values that have been squared. That's across conditions minus g squared, g is the sum of x across all conditions, over capital N, which is the sum of all sample sizes across all three conditions. And we have all this, all these values that we can enter into our equation, replace our variable. So they've given us the sum of x squared, that's 393. Our g is, again, the sum of x values across all conditions is 72. We're going to square that. And n um, is also given, it's equal to 24. So in our calculators, square 72 divided by 24 and subtract it from 393. We should get a value equal to 177. Now we can calculate our df total. Again, this will just um, lead us into the process of elimination where once we have two of the values we can look at the relationship between them and solve for the missing variable. df total is equal to n minus 1 so we have 24 minus 1 and that gives us 23. So I'm going to use all these values that I've calculated now um, and put them into a source table as we've done in previous videos. And we'll use these values to calculate the missing values in our source table. So given the values we just calculated, we calculated our SS within, and that was equal to 105. We had our degrees of freedom within, which was 21, and we were able to calculate the mean squares for within, and that was equal to 5. Then we were able to calculate SS total, um, which was equal to 177, and our DF total, which was equal to 23. And now we're going to calculate what's missing. What's missing are the um, statistics for between groups as well as our F ratio. So SS between, instead of using the equations given, we can simply look at the difference between SS total and subtract SS within. And that is equal to 177 minus 105. So in our calculator is 177 minus 105, and we get 72. And then to calculate the df between, we can use the same process and take df total and subtract df within. And that will leave us with df between. And so that is equal to 23 minus 21, and we get 2. And now, um, just as we did with our ms within, we can calculate ms mean squares for between. And that's equal to ss between over df between that we just calculated. So this would be 72 over 2. In our calculator, 72 divided by 2, we get 36. And now we have everything we need to calculate our F ratio. It's equal to MS between, again, the variation accounted for by treatment in addition to um, unsystematic differences or factors over MS within, which is explained by the random unsystematic factors only. And we have these two values that are coming from this column here. We have 36 divided by 5 to give our rate F ratio. So 36 divided by 5, we get 7.2, and that's our F statistic. So we would write this as 7.2 F 
F and our numerator degrees of freedom two, comma, the degrees of freedom for the denominator, 21, is equal to 7.2. And going back to using alpha equal to 0 0.05, so we had alpha equal to 0 0.05. And we're going to use degrees of freedom equal to 2 comma 21 to find our critical F value. So again, our numerator DF was 2, denominator DF 21. So numerator 2, go down to 21, see where they intersect. And we get a critical F equal to 3.47. So our critical F is 3.47, and if we take a look visually at our positively skewed F distribution, we've, um, again, if the ratio is equal to 1, that means that the variability of the numerator is equal to the variability of the denominator. That's not the case here. We have a critical T, excuse me, F of 3.47, and our F was equal to 7.2. Again, the critical F establishes the critical region. If our F statistic falls in the critical region, then we know we get to reject the null. And, and at this point, we, we understand that the students do perceive this, these teachers differently in terms of their acceptance of cheating behavior. So at least one of these types of teachers is seen as being different um, compared to the other groups, um, the other two. There are three total being compared here. So using this information, we can calculate our effect size at a squared, the percentage of variability accounted for by the difference in this quasi-independent variable. And our equation is SS between over SS total. And we have those values from our table. SS between was equal to 72. SS total was equal to 177. So in our calculator, 72 divided by 177, and we get 0 0.40 if we round 7. So essentially, we're saying 40.7% of the difference in the means for each level, condition, or treatment, in this case, the quasi-independent variable. 40.7% um, of the differences that we are seeing is attributed to the fact that these teachers are perceived differently or how they were described as being poor teachers average or good teachers. That the difference in how they're perceived in their acceptance of cheating is based on how the students see them um, in terms of how, what, what kind of quality of teacher they are. Now we can draw our final conclusion. So we would conclude that we get to reject the null. Results indicate that there are significant differences among the three types of teachers. And these are differences, differences that pertain to how they um, accept um, or if they accept cheating in their classrooms, again, based on the different types of teachers that the students categorize, the poor, average, and good teachers. And so the results indicate that um, there are differences among the three types of teachers. And we would state we conducted um, an analysis of variance. We cite our degrees of freedom, numerator, de numerator degrees of freedom, followed by the denominator degrees of freedom and it was equal to 7.2 at a squared was equal to 0 0.407 and that would be our final concluding statement for this particular research. 
Number 15, um, this one stresses the relationship between variables, um, in particular the ones relating to calculations for degrees of freedom. 15, a research report from an independent measure study states that there are significant differences between treatments. So this would be our concluding statement. We conducted an al analysis of variance. The numerator degrees of freedom is equal to 3, denominator degrees of freedom equal to 48, our F ratio was equal to 2.95, and the probability was less than our alpha, so we would show significance. So what we are asked are how many treatment conditions were compared. The treatment conditions are represented in the degrees of freedom for between. So our, our equation, degrees of freedom between, again, the between because um, the numerator represents the variation between treatments. So our equation for degrees of freedom between is equal to k minus 1. And we're saying that that is equal to 3 here. This one is equal to 3. So we would say 3 is equal to k minus 1. Again, k is the number of levels or treatment conditions, what we're trying to solve for. So to solve for k, it's a simple algebraic problem. So we'd add one here and add one here. And we would conclude that 4 is equal to k. So k represents the number of treatment conditions. And so we would conclude that there were four treatment conditions in this particular study. Now we're asked to determine what was the total number of participants in the study. The total participants in the study comes from the df for the denominator, which is 48. So the df from the denominator um, is a function of the degrees of freedom from within. So degrees of freedom within equation is n minus k. And so we're saying that degrees of freedom within is equal to 48. And we're solving for n. We know what k is now. k is equal to 4. So to solve for n, again, we just use our algebra skills. So we add 4 here, we add 4 here, and then we would know and conclude that n is equal to 52. So we had a total of 52 individuals um, or observations in this particular study. So when you're given this type of problem, you'll be given a concluding um, statement of significance. And you'll have to recognize that the first DF pertains to degrees of freedom between. The second DF pertains to degrees of freedom within. And from that, you can solve for those values and determine how many conditions or treatments or levels, and um, as well as how many total participants across all conditions. Number 17, a pharmaceutical company has developed a drug that is expected to reduce hunger. To test the drug, two samples of rats are selected with n equal to 20 in each sample. The rats in the first sample receive the drug every day, and those in the second sample are given a placebo. The dependent variable is the amount of food eaten by each rat over a one-month period. An analysis of variance is used to, to evaluate the difference between the two sample means and the results reported in the following summary table. Fill in all the missing values in the table. Start with degrees of freedom column. So first, let's find out, let's uh, extract the important information. So we have, um, or to, we're told that we have two samples. And we know that k, right, is equal to the number of levels or number of samples. So we know that's equal to 2. And then we're told that within each of those two samples, we have 20 rats per sample. So our n would equal 2 times 20, which would equal 40. Now, since the hint was to work with our df column first, let's um, identify our degrees of freedom equation. So degrees of freedom between is equal to k minus 1. Degrees of freedom within is equal to n minus k and degrees of freedom total is equal to n minus 1. All right, so given that, we can calculate our degrees of freedom between, because we know k, k is equal to 2. 
2 minus 1 is equal to 1, so we can fill that in. And let's see what else we can fill out. Um, so degrees of freedom um, within is equal to n minus k. So n is equal to 40. k is equal to 2. And we get 38. And we know that uh, without having to look at the equation for degrees of freedom total, we know that it's the total of df between and df within. So that would equal 39. And just to check, right, the degrees of freedom total is equal to n minus 1, and that's equal to 40 minus 1, and we get 39. So that all checks out. Now we'll need to use that, that column to um, calculate the rest of our statistics. The one that I would recommend you attack next would be um, SS between, because we have our F ratio. And um, excuse me, before I, I speak um, to the F ratio, we should look at the MS value. That's what I meant to focus on. So our MS we know is equal to SS between, and let me be more um, specific here, it's MS between that, um, that we have the solution for, is SS between over DF between, and we're told that's equal to 20, so we can fill in here 20 is equal to SS between over, and we have our degrees of freedom between, which is equal to 1. And so obviously if we want to solve for SS between, we'd multiply by 1 here and 1 here, and we would then conclude that SS between is equal to 20. So this is equal to 20. And now, given that information, we can um, use this F statistic of 4 to solve for our missing MS. So we, we know that F is equal to MS between over MS within. And we have some of these values, so let's replace what we know. We are told that F is equal to 4. So we would say 4 is equal to, and we have ms between, which is 20, and divided by ms within. And so again, if we want to solve for ms within, we would multiply on both sides, and then divide 20 by, it would look like this, ms within. Oops. That doesn't look very nice. Let's try that again. <laughs> ms within is equal to 20 over 4, and we would solve that to equal 5. So we would check that. Is 20, again, to make sure, is 20 divided by 5 equal to 4? Yes, so we know that we have solved that correctly. And now we know that in order to get SS within, um, it, MS, within is SS divided by DF within. So again, we'll see the relationship between these two variables to solve for the missing variable. Okay, so we know that MS MS within is equal to SS within over its corresponding degrees of freedom. And we know some of these values, so again, we're just going to replace what we know. We know that ms within, we just figured that out, that's equal to 5. So that's equal to ss within, which is missing, over degrees of freedom within is equal to 38. And so if we want to solve for SS within, we simply just multiply by 38 on both sides. And now 38 times 5 is equal to 190. So our SS within is equal to 190. 
and all that's left to do is figure out our SS total. So it would be the summation of SS between added to SS within, and here we would get 210. And this is all you have to do. Again, we were only given two original values, but given the equations that we um, have learned, we can use them to fill in what's missing. Um, and it is usually easiest and most productive if you begin with the DF column. So start there and work your way around as to what's given. Use the equations that we've learned, replace variables, solve for the missing var um, values. And I should also note that, um, you know, we were able to find K and N by reading that information in the text. So the context of the research will provide you that information which is necessary to calculate the degrees of freedom values. Number 23, there is some research indicating that college students who use Facebook while studying tend to have lower grades than non-users. A representative study surveys students to determine the amount of Facebook use during the time they are studying or doing homework. Based on the amount of time spent on Facebook, students are classified into three groups and their grade point averages are recorded. The following data show the typical pattern of results. So we have our non-users, rarely use, regularly use, and of course with every sample we have um, the data provided our observations. In this case, it is um, the GPA for the particular student in these three different categories. Again, this would be a quasi-independent variable. Um, the non-users are different from the rarely users and then the regular, regularly use categories. We're going to use ANOVA with alpha at 5% to determine whether there are significant mean differences among the three groups. So we'll begin with our null and our research hypothesis. The null states that population 1 is equal to population 2 and that's equal to population 3. In other words, the average GPA for non-user regularly use and regular, excuse me, rarely use and regularly use um, categories are all equal, that we would see no difference in the average GPA. The research hypothesis would state that at least one group is significantly different. So notice that in this problem we're given all the raw data, the, the x values or the observations for the three categories, non-user, rarely use, and regularly use um, categories. And so we're going to start from scratch and calculate the mean and um, the SS, the sum of squared deviations for each of these categories. So on the next page you'll see that I've taken um, this data, right, for the three different categories and I'm going to present it in an Excel um, um, spreadsheet to show how we would calculate the three values I just discussed. So for, we're going to identify sample size, um, the mean, and um, the sum of squared deviations for each of these samples. So again, what I've done is transferred all of those GPAs for my non-users, my rarely use category and regularly use category. So all of that data was provided and I just transferred it over into this spreadsheet and then I created a, um, a category of x squared for each of the three samples and I did the summation. So I'm going to walk you through all of these values but again I just wanted to highlight those are the values that we saw on the first page um, for this particular problem. Those are the GPAs for these different um, three samples, the individuals or observations for each sample. So first let's identify um, our sample size for our first category. So N1 we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 individuals. This bottom um, value is the sum of those values. So N1 is equal to 10. N2, we have a, the same amount. We have the same number of columns. 
it's equal to 10. And then our sample 3 is equal to 10. Then um, we'll, I, I'd like to identify the t value for each category. So t, again, we've learned is the sum of x. And I've calculated that value. So the sum of x for our first sample, the non-users, is 37.1. The t value for our second distribution is this value, 34.6. And our third t value is equal to 30.1. Again, all I did was take the sum of all of the um, observations for the three separate categories. And at this point, I can calculate the mean for my first sample, the first sample representing non-users. It would simply be 37.1 divided by 10. So their average GPA is 3.71. Those are for the non-users. The mean for our second group um, representing rarely used it would be 34.6 divided by 10, and we get an average of 3.46. And then um, the mean for the last category um, regularly used would be 30.1 divided by 10. They, they have an average GP of 30.1. All right, well, th this information um, helps us identify a couple other statistics. Um, mainly, we want to know how many observations or individuals do we have across all three conditions. That could that is derived from taking the sum of our n values. So we have 10 plus 10 plus 10. We have 30 total observations or participants. And then um, g, we've learned that g is the sum of t. g represents essentially the sum of x across all conditions. So we would take the t values, again this category here, and sum up all of those values. And if we were to do that, we get 101.8. And then finally, the sum of x squared. Um, notice again, none of these values were given. We had to calculate them from the raw data. So here, um, the first in, for the first sample, I took all the x values and I squared them and got this column. And then for the rarely used category, again, I took 3.5 and squared it and got um, this column. And I did that for all three. And down at the bottom in these bold um, values, bold numbers, that's the sum of all x values that have been squared for each of those three samples. So the sum of x squared across all, or we would refer to as the sum of x squared total, would be the summation of those three values. And that's equal to 350.2226. And, and we're going to use all of those values to calculate um, the statistics needed to conduct our analysis of variance. Okay, so the next step would be to calculate the SS value for each sample. So we know that SS is equal to the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared over n. And we're going to do that for each of our um, samples. So this is the equation. We're going to do it for sample 1, the non-users. Um, sample 2, those identified as rarely used. And then sample 3, regularly used. So using that equation, we're going to solve for SS1. And we have these values already calculated, so it would be the sum of all x values, um, x values that have been squared. So 138.4582 minus the sum of x, which is 31, excuse me, 37.1, and we're going to square that over 10. So we can now calculate the sum of squared deviations for our first distribution. And if we do that calculation, we get 0 0.81, 0 0.8172. We're going to do the same for our second distribution. And again, we have these values. We have the sum of all x values that have been squared. It's equal to 120.5186 minus the sum of x, which is 34.6, we're going to square that and divide by 10. If we do that calculation, um, we get a value of 
0, 2, 6. Again, that's the sum of squared deviations for our second distribution. And then the third distribution, so SS3, is equal to the sum of x values that have been squared, 91.2458, minus the sum of x values, 30.1. We're going to square that. Divide by 10. And that value is equal to 0.6448. And now that we have all three SS values, we can compute the SS within. Again, that's the easiest statistic of all of them. And it's calculated by SS. So SS within is equal to the sum of all our SS values across conditions. So all we have to do is take this value, and this value, and this value, and take, take the summation of that to get the sum of all um, squared deviations across the three conditions. So again, in our calculators, go ahead and enter the sum of these values. So point six. 6448 added to 0 0.8026 and added to 0 0.8172. And we get, if we round, um, be 2.265 if we round. And so now we have our SS within. We can enter it here. So we have 2.2. Ah, oops, a daisy. Okay, so we've placed the value of SS within in our um, summary table. So it's 2.265 if we round. And now we can calculate our degrees of freedom within. And the equation is n minus k. So we know that n is equal to 30. And we have three conditions, minus 3, and that gives us 27. So we can enter that. So I've placed 27 in degrees of freedom for within. And now what we'd like to, uh, what we should do is calculate the SS total. Again, we can do SS between, but those calculations are pretty extensive. And we have what we need to calculate SS total. So I'm going to read some of this um, information to do those calculations. Okay, so our SS total, again, all of this is leading us into our F ratio statistic, which is the MS between over MS within. So SS total is equal to the sum of X squared across all conditions minus g squared, which is the sum of x across all conditions, over the total number of observations. So we have these values. We identified that this, right, the sum of x um, squared across all conditions was equal to 350.2226. We have g. Again, we had identified that earlier. That's the sum of x across conditions. That's 101. We're going to square that, and we have n. So we can see how easy this calculation is, given that we identified these values earlier. So in our calculus, let me, I shouldn't write n. I should actually write what the value is equal to. So the value is actually equal to 30. Replace variables. Okay, so 101.8 squared divided by 30 and subtracted from 350.2226 should give you a value of 4.781, 4.781, and that's our SS total that I'll put into our summary table. Okay, so I've placed that in our summary table to represent SS total, and now we can calculate DF total, which is equal to N minus 1. 30 minus 1 is equal to 29. We can put that into our summary table. So I've placed the df total into our table. And now it's just a process of looking at the difference between these values to calculate the ss between, df between, and then that'll lead us into our ms values. 
All right, so we can solve SS between by doing the following. SS between is equal to SS total minus SS within. And we've already calculated all of these. We have these over here in our table. So SS total is equal to 4.781. SS within is um, equal to 2.265. So if we do that calculation, the difference is equal to 2.516. We'll place that in our table. So I've taken that value and placed it in the SS between category. Now we can calculate our SS, excuse me, degrees of freedom for between. So degrees of freedom between can be calculated by taking degrees of freedom total minus degrees of freedom within. Degrees of freedom total was equal to 29 minus degrees of freedom within 27 and we get a total equal to 2. So we'll place that in our table. So I've placed the degrees of freedom um, between using these calculations here in our table and now we can calculate our MS values um, because we have our SS and their corresponding degrees of freedom and then we can end with our F ratio. Okay, so our MS mean squares for between is equal to SS between over its corresponding degrees of freedom and we have these values, so it's 2.516 over 2. I'm going to come back to that. MS within is equal to SS within over its corresponding degrees of freedom. And we have those values, 2.265 over 27. So now we can calculate our MS or mean squares between and um, MS or mean squares within. All right, so for our first one, 2.516 divided by 2 gives us 1.258, and then 2.265 divided by 27. If we round, it's 0 0.084. So let's put that into our table. So again, I've place these two values in the summary table in the category. So mean squared for between 1.258 and mean squared for within 0 0.084. And now with that, that information, we can calculate our F ratio, which is equal to MS between, which represents the variability between the categories as well as the within. Variation over MS within simply represents the variance within each sample. And we have these values, so F ratio is equal to 1.258 over 0 0.084. And this will give us our F statistic. If we do this calculation, we get 14.98 as our F ratio. So I'm going to place that in our table as well. So I've taken this value and placed it in that final category representing our F statistic. And we could understand that when we um, finalize our answer or conclusion, it would be our F, the numerator degrees of freedom, which is 2, comma, the, new, the denominator degrees of freedom, 27, is equal to 14.98. Um, it's a fairly large F ratio. And so what we need to do to draw our conclusions is um, find our critical F value. I'll do that on the next page along with um, the calculation for eta squared um, and then finalize our um, conclusion. Okay, so we'll, um, using ANOVA at, with alpha 0 0.05 degrees of freedom 2 comma 27, we're going to find our critical F value in our table. So our degrees of freedom, the numerator was 2 and the denominator 27, so we'll enter it here, 2 
and 27 and see where they intersect. And we get a critical F value of 3.35. So our critical F, 3.35. So visually we'll um, express this, our positively skewed F distribution. Our critical F, 3.35. And that sets the boundaries for a critical region. And we had calculated an F equal to 14.98, which would be way over here. And therefore, we know we we're going to get to reject the null. We're seeing a significant difference in the GPAs for the three different groups in relation to their, their, the amount of time they spend um, on Facebook while studying or completing homework. Now we can calculate our Eta squared um, statistic. So our equation for Eta squared is equal to SS between over SS total. We have those values from the previous page. Um, SS between was equal to 2.516 over SS total, which was 4.7181. And if we do this calculation, we should get 0.526, or we would indicate that 52.6% of the difference in GPAs is accounted for by the amount of time these students spend on Facebook. Again, 52.6% of the difference in GPAs is accounted for or explained by the, the amount of time they spend on Facebook while doing homework or studying. So we would reject the null that stated that the GPAs across these three groups would be equal. The results indicate that there is a significant difference in the GPAs across levels of the quasi-independent variable. Again, the quasi-independent variable uh, relates to the amount of time that they spend on Facebook while completing homework or studying. So we have determined, based on our F ratio, that the um, results indicate that there is a significant difference in the GPAs across levels um, of the, the quasi-independent variable. Again, being more specific, is the amount of Facebook time that they spend um, while studying or completing homework. We conducted ANOVA. Our F ratio was um, based on degrees of freedom for the numerator, 2. And the denominator 27, our F statistic, was equal to 14.98. And our ETA squared is equal to 0.526. So again, showing significant difference in the GPAs based on the amount of time spent on Facebook while completing homework or studying.